The Byzantine Army of the Komnenian Era or Komnenian Army was the force established by Byzantine Emperor Alexios I Komnenos during the late 11th, early 12th century, and perfected by his successors John II Komnenos and Manuel I Komnenos during the 12th century. Alexios constructed a new army from the ground up, completely replacing previous forms of the Byzantine army. The Komnenian army was instrumental in the Komnenian restoration of the Byzantine Empire during the period of its existence, and was deployed in the Balkans, Italy, Hungary, Russia, Anatolia, Syria, the Holy Land and Egypt. Introduction at the beginning of the Komnenian period in 1081, the Byzantine Empire had been reduced to the smallest territorial extent in its history, surrounded by enemies, and financially ruined by a long period of civil war. The empire's prospects had looked grim. The state lay defenseless before internal and external threats, as the Byzantine army had been reduced to a shadow of its former self. During the 11th century, decades of peace and neglect had reduced the old thematic forces, and the military and political anarchy following the Battle of Manzikert in 1071 had destroyed the professional Tagmata, the core of the Byzantine army. At Manzikert, units tracing their lineage for centuries back to the Roman Empire were wiped out and the subsequent loss of Asia Minor deprived the empire of its main recruiting ground, in the Balkans. At the same time, the empire was exposed to invasions by the Norman Kingdom of Sicily, the expansionist activities of the Principality of Diocleon by Pechena grades across the Danube. The Byzantine army's nadir was reached in 1091, when Alexios I could manage to field only 500 soldiers from the empire's professional forces. These formed the nucleus of the army, with the addition of the armed retainers of Alexios' relatives and the nobles enrolled in the army, plus the substantial aid of a large force of allied Cumans, which won the Battle of Livunian against the Pekinegs. Yet, through a combination of skill, determination, and years of campaigning, Alexios, John, and Manuel Komnenos managed to restore the power of the Byzantine Empire by constructing a new army from scratch. This process should not, however, at least in its earlier phases, be seen as a planned exercise in military restructuring. In particular, Alexios I was often reduced to reacting to events rather than controlling them. The changes he made to the Byzantine army were largely done out of immediate necessity and were pragmatic in nature. The new force had a core of units which were both professional and disciplined. It contained formidable guards units such as the Varangians, the Athanatoi, a unit of heavy cavalry stationed in Constantinople, the Vardariatai and the Archontopoloia, recruited by Alexios from the sons of dead Byzantine officers, foreign mercenary regiments, and also units of professional soldiers recruited from the provinces. These provincial troops included cataphractoid cavalry from Macedonia, Thessaly, Thrace, and various other provincial forces. Alongside troops raised and paid for directly by the state, the Komnenian army included the armed followers of members of the wider imperial family, and its extensive connections. In this can be seen the beginnings of the feudalization of the Byzantine military. The granting of pro Neue was beginning to become a notable element in the military infrastructure towards the end of the Komnenian period, though it became much more important subsequently. The pro Neue was essentially the grant of rights to receive revenue from a particular area of land, a form of tax farming, and it was held in return for military obligations. The Komnenian period, despite almost constant warfare, is notable for the lack of military treatise writing, which seems to have petered out during the 11th century. So, unlike in earlier periods, there are no detailed descriptions of Byzantine tactics and military equipment. Information on military matters in the Komnenian era must be gleaned from passing comments in contemporary historical and biographical literature, court panegyrics and from pictorial evidence. Size 
there are no surviving reliable and detailed records to allow the accurate estimation of the overall size of the Byzantine army in this period. It is notable that John Birkenmeyer, the author of the definitive study of the Komnenian army, made no attempt to do so. He merely noted that while Alexios I had difficulty raising sufficient troops to repel the Italo-Normans, John I could field armies as large as those of the Kingdom of Hungary and Manuel I assembled an army capable of defeating the large crusading force of Conrad III. Other historians have, however, made attempts to estimate overall army size. During the reign of Alexios I, the field army may have numbered around 20,000 men. By 1143, the entire Byzantine army has been estimated to have numbered about 50,000 men and continued to remain about this size until the end of Manuel's reign. The total number of mobile professional and mercenary forces that the emperor could assemble was about 25,000 soldiers while the static garrisons and militias spread around the empire made up the remainder with about 25,000 men. During this period, the European provinces in the Balkans were able to provide more than 6,000 cavalry in total while the eastern provinces of Asia Minor provided about the same number. This amounted to more than 12,000 cavalry for the entire empire, not including those from allied contingents. Constantinople had a permanent garrison of 10,000 troops not including the 5,000 Varangians garrisoned in the two imperial palaces. Modern historians have estimated the size of Komnenian armies on campaign at about 15,000 to 20,000 men, but field armies with less than 10,000 men were quite common. In 1176 Manuel I managed to gather approximately 30-40,000 men, of which 25,000 were Byzantines and the rest were allied contingents from Hungary. Serbia and Antioch, though this was for an exceptional campaign. His military resources stretched to putting another, smaller, army in the field simultaneously. After the death of Manuel I, the Byzantine army seemed to have declined in numbers. In 1186, Emperor Isaac II assembled 250 knights and 500 infantry from the Latin population of Constantinople, an equivalent number of Georgian and Turkish mercenaries, and about 1,000 Byzantine soldiers. This force of 2,500 plus managed to defeat Alexius Branus' rebellion. The rebel army which could not have numbered much more than 3-4,000 men had been the field force sent against the Bulgarians. Another force of about 3-4,000 was stationed at the city of Ceres. Structure, command hierarchy and unit composition under the emperor, the commander-in-chief of the army was the Megas Domesticos. His second-in-command was the protostrator. The commander of the navy was the Megas Du, who was also the military commander for Crete, the Aegean Islands and the southern parts of mainland Greece. A commander entrusted with an independent field force or one of the major divisions of a large expeditionary army was termed a strategos. Individual provinces and the defensive forces they contained were governed by a Du or Kate Pano who was a military officer with civil authority, under the due a fortified settlement or a fortress was commanded by an officer with the title, Castrophylax. Lesser commanders, with the exception of some archaic titles, were known by the size of the unit they commanded. For example a Tagma Tarches commanded a Tagma. The commander of the Varangians had a unique title, Akolithos, indicative of his close personal attendance on the emperor. During the Komnenian period the earlier names for the basic units of the Byzantine cavalry, Bandon and Moira, gradually disappear to be replaced by the Allegin, believed to have been between 300 and 500 men strong. The Allegin, commanded by an alligator, was probably divided into subunits of 100, 50 and 10 men. On campaign the Allegia could be grouped together into larger bodies called taxis, syntaxis, lokoi or tagmata. 
The infantry unit was the Taxi Archaea, a unit type first recorded under Nike for us the second for Cass. It was theoretically 1,000 men strong, and was commanded by a Taxi Arches. Guards units and the Imperial household Many of the earlier guard units did not survive the reign of Alexios I, the Scole, Immortals, and ex are not mentioned in the reigns of his immediate successes. The notable exceptions to this process being the Varangians and Vestiarii, and probably the Archont of Poloia, the Heteraea, commanded by the Megas Heteriarches, is still mentioned though it was always more a collection of individual units under an administrative title than a single regiment. In this period, the Varangian Guard consisted of Englishmen, Russians, and Scandinavians, totaling 5,000 men. Immediately after the Battle of Dirachium, Alexios I recruited 2,000 men to form the Tagma of the Archont of Poloia. The Vardariots, a cavalry unit initially recruited from the Christianized Magyars of the Vardar Valley, were a later addition to the guard and were probably raised by John II. They were commanded by an officer with the rank of Primacarios. Of increasing importance during the family centric Komnenian period were the men known as Oikiwa. When mobilized for war, the Oikiwa were the equivalent of the household knights of Western kings and would have served as cataphractoi. These household troops would have included the emperor's personal retinue, his relatives, and close associates, also accompanied by their immediate retinues and the young aristocrats attached to the court, plus they probably also included the vestiary Thai guards. The Oikiwa would have been equipped with the finest arms and armor and mounted on the highest quality war horses available. Although not an entirely formal regiment, the household would have been a formidable fighting force, however, it would have been available only when the emperor took the field in person. Officers of the Vestiary Thai were given the lofty court title of Sebastis and two of their number, Andronokos Lampardis and Alexios Petrelafes, were prominent generals. Under Alexios I, and probably subsequently, the Imperial Oikos also served as a sort of staff college for training promising young officers. Alexios took 300 young officers into his household, whom he trained personally. In the campaign against Bohemond in 1107-8 the best of these officers commanded the blockading forces keeping the Norman army pent up on the Albanian coast. The victorious outcome of this campaign probably resulted, in part, from the increased discipline the Byzantine forces showed due to the quality of their commanders. Native regiments in the course of the 11th century The units of part-time soldier farmers belonging to the Themata were largely replaced by smaller, full-time, provincial tagmata. The political and military anarchy of the later 11th century meant that it was solely the provincial tagmata of the southern Balkans which survived. These regiments whose soldiers could be characterized as native mercenaries, became an integral part of the central army and many field armies of the Komnenian period, the Tagmata of Macedonia, Thrace and Thessaly being particularly notable. Though raised in particular provinces these regiments had long ceased to have any local defense role. As regions were reconquered and brought under greater control provincial forces were re-established, though initially they often only served to provide local garrisons. In the reign of Manuel I the historian Knight Hastchoniates mentions a division of a field army composed of the eastern and western Tagmata, this Wording implies that regular regiments were once again being raised in Anatolia. Military settlers, often derived from defeated foes, also supplied soldiers. One such group of settlers, defeated Pekinegs, was settled in the Moglena district and provided a unit to the army. Another was composed of Serbs who were settled around Nicomedia in Anatolia. Towards the end of the period pro Neue revenue grants, from the income generated by parcels of land, allowed the provinces to be used to raise heavy cavalrymen with less immediate drain on the state treasury. 
The origins and organization of the native infantry of the Byzantine army of this period are obscure. It is known that there was an official register of soldiers serving as infantry, but their geographical origins and unit names are not recorded. As the native cavalry were organized into regional units it is probable that the infantry had a similar organization. It is possible that each native provincial tagma, such as that described in the sources as the Macedonian Legion or Macedonian Division, included an infantry taxiarchia, or possibly more than one, alongside the better attested contingents of cataphractus heavy cavalry foreign regiments and allied contingents the Central Army. In addition to the Guards units and the native regiments raised from particular provinces, comprised a number of tagmata of foreign soldiers. These included the Latinicon, a heavy cavalry formation of Western European knights, and members of families of Western origin who had been in Byzantine employ for generations. Early in the period, during the reign of Alexios I, the Westerners in the Central Army were referred to as Tun Frankicon Tagmaton, the Frankish Regiment. It has been suggested that to regard these knights as mercenaries is somewhat mistaken and that they were essentially regular soldiers paid directly from the state treasury, but having foreign origins or ancestry. Another unit was the Torkopoloia, which, as its name implies, was composed of Byzantinized Turks and mercenaries recruited from the Seljuk realms. A third was the Skythekin recruited from the Turkic Pekanegs, Cumans and Uzes of the Ukrainian steppes. In order to increase the size of his army, Alexios I even recruited 3,000 Polishans from Philippopolis and formed them into the Tagma of the Manichaeans, while 7,000 Turks were also hired. Foreign mercenaries and the soldiers provided by imperial vassals, serving under their own leaders, were another feature of the Byzantine army of the time. These troops would usually be placed under a Byzantine general as part of his command to be brigaded with other troops of a similar fighting capability, or combined to create field forces of mixed type. However, if the foreign contingent were particularly large and its leader a powerful and prominent figure then it might remain separate. Baldwin of Antioch commanded a major division, composed of Westerners, of the Byzantine army at the Battle of Mariokephalon. The Byzantines usually took care to mix ethnic groups within the formations making up a field army in order to minimize the risk of all the soldiers of a particular nationality changing sides or decamping to the rear during battle. During the early part of the 12th century, the Serbs were required to send 300 cavalry whenever the Byzantine emperor was campaigning in Asia Minor. This number was increased after Manuel I defeated the Serb rebellion in 1150-2000 Serbs for European campaigns and 500 Serbs for Anatolian campaigns. Towards the end of the Komnenian period island soldiers, undoubtedly cavalry, became an important element in Byzantine armies. It is notable that there was no major incident of mutiny or treachery involving foreign troops between 1081 and 1185. Armed followers of the aristocracy the semi-feudal forces raised by the dinatoire or provincial magnates were a useful addition to the Byzantine army and during the middle years of the reign of Alexios I probably made up the greater proportion of many field armies. Some leading provincial families became very powerful, for example, the Gabras family of Trebizond achieved virtual independence of central authority at times during the 12th century. The wealthy and influential members of the regional aristocracy could raise substantial numbers of troops from their retainers, relatives and tenants. Their quality, however, would tend to be inferior to the professional troops of the Basilica Alagia, the personal guards of aristocrats who were also generals in the Byzantine army are also notable in this period. These guards would have resembled smaller versions of the imperial oikos. The Sebastocrator Isaac, brother of John II, even maintained his own unit of vestiary guards. 
The guard of the Megas Domesticos John Axouch was large enough to put down an outbreak of rioting between Byzantine troops and allied Venetians. During the siege of Corfu in 1149, such units would have been composed of well-equipped, effective soldiers and would often have included kinsmen of the general.